Any remaining debate, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Discussion item from the discussion of the cybersecurity to uh, discussion of the civic software upgrade proposal. Trustees, he's asking can he change his title of the presentation to the uh, civic upgrade that we talked about before. Does any trustee have a problem? He, he gave it out once before. He, he, I'm sure he has he's given it out, but uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Uh, Joseph Wizard-White, and uh, there's going to be a presentation from. Um, Bernardi and Cayman, uh, that's the second one, but the first one is a presentation discussion of the 2002 A series bond. So, Mr. Durham. Um, you might get a, put a mic right there by him, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, as the Mayor mentioned, my name is uh, Chuck Durham. I'm with the uh, firm of Kane McKenna and Associates uh, of Chicago. We have been the economic development consultants for the city for, uh, for, the, for the village for many years. Uh, with me tonight is Mr. Bob Dale, who's with Bernardi Security. They have been the uh, village's underwriter for several bond issues also for many years. In, the, in our respective roles of uh, working with the village on the bond issues, and particularly with respect to the TIF districts, we've uh, always been monitoring the TIF districts in terms of their performance, uh, monitoring the economy in terms of its performance and the impact on the village, and also monitoring the bond markets to see if there was any improvements that could be made in the village's situation with respect to the bond issues. We're pleased tonight to be before you to identify a couple of opportunities for the village. We think there are some good opportunities for you, something worth considering. Uh, Bob has put together a, a presentation that we're going to do the details of it. But I would just uh, introduce that by saying it involves a couple of different things. Number one, it involves opportunities that have been created for the village by the improved performance of your TIF districts. Your TIF districts over the last few years have been performing very well, which is creating more revenues and opportunities for the village to do some things. Secondly, with respect to the economy and interest rates, that's created an opportunity to take a look at, look at your existing bond issues, in this case, particularly the 2002A bonds. And because of the uh, improvements in the interest rates, there's a possibility of saving some money uh, for the village with respect to potentially be funding those bonds. Uh, in addition to that, there are some additional bonds that the city, the village has with respect to the district, the city's 2008-2009 bonds, that Bob's also going to address, and could be some future opportunities with respect to that. So with no further uh, comment, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Vail, who's going to make a more detailed presentation of the items I just outlined. Pull it out if you want. You take the mic out. Nothing, you take the mic out. Yeah. Well, I'll just take my hand out. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Thanks, Chuck. My name is Bob Vail with Bernardi Securities. Um, I passed out a presentation I wanted to go through that basically outlines what uh, Chuck had just mentioned. And uh, as we go through this, I mean, if you've got questions, some of this gets a little confusing. Definitely don't uh, hesitate.
hesitate to uh, interrupt me and ask any questions, and then obviously at the end we'll, we'll go through it and answer any questions as well. Um, so going through this, if you turn to page two, this is all of the outstanding debt for the TIF. So TIF two and TIF three. Uh, this is the principal repayment for the four bond issues that are outstanding for the TIF. And you'll see at the top it says issue uh, 2002A, 2002B, 2008, and the 2009 bonds. What we're looking at tonight, well, first off, is going to be the 2002A bonds. You'll see there's a, it says NIC at the bottom, 5%. That means net interest cost. That's basically the remaining interest rate on those bonds at 5%. The, also, the other important thing to look at, it says call. That's the call feature. When could those bonds first be called in? And those O2 bonds could, could have been called in in 2012. So those bonds are now callable and they have an interest rate of 5%. The other two bond issues we'll look at in a second are the 2008 and 2009 issues. We'll see the 2008 issue has an interest rate of over 6%. Uh, 2009 issue, a little bit lower, about 4.6%. The important thing to remember on those two bond issues is the call feature is not until December of 2019. With new tax reforms, we cannot redeem those bonds until 90 days before that call date. So not until September 1st of next year. <coughs> so that's why Chuck had mentioned we're looking at the O2A bonds currently for a refinance. No way from 09 may make sense next year, but we'll get into that. Uh, page three, set up the same way but this includes the interest payments. So you'll see the total debt payment on each one of those bond issues. You'll see this, that shaded area that says total debt service. That's the total payment each year for those bonds payable out of the, the, uh, uh, the TIF increment. So the TIF revenues that come in out of the TIF. And in the far right hand column, the coverage. So if we look at 2017, the revenues basically are showing 1.35 times coverage. So basically the revenue coming in on the TIF is 135% of what the debt payment is. So per the uh, statutory requirements when all these bonds were issued, we need to show at least 1.25 times coverage. So you're in excess of that amount and in certain years of payments go up and down, you're in excess more of that amount. Um, but right now you're 1.35 to 1.45 percent part times. Now getting into the uh, where interest rates are today and why this may make sense to look at refinancing, uh, that's, there's a chart on page four, four and five. Or there's a 10-year history of where municipal bond rates have been uh, nationwide to give you an idea of where a 20-year bond issue is being priced nationwide. Now, if you look on the far right, you remember those 08 and those 09 bonds had high interest rates. Well, reason being 08 and 09, that was when the uh, recession hit, interest rates spiked up. Those bonds were issued at that time. You needed to issue the bonds at that time for those projects. But if you go all the way to the right, that's where we are today. And you'll see that interest rate is much lower than where it was back in 08 and 09. So this gives you just kind of a 10-year recap of where rates have been. Page five, same graph, but I went back 40 years just to give you a, a, a bigger trajectory of where those rates have been back to 1978. And you'll see as rates have gone up, they're still near all-time lows and where we're at on that far right-hand side of the graph. Next page, page six, this is just each year, interest rates go up for every year that you borrow. This sh just shows three tranches of bonds, non-rated bonds, A-rated bonds, double-A-rated bonds. Interest rates change daily. So as of Monday, this just gives you an idea of where rates were going out to 2038. So that's really what we're basing the numbers on today of where rates are currently. Uh, we won't be locking in the rates until we get through the process. I'll go through the timeline in a minute. But this just gives you an idea of where rates are today. Now actually getting into the Village's bonds, uh, page 7, this is the 2002A bonds. So this is an issue that's now callable, if you recall, um, now at any time, they became callable in 2012. The first box, it says current amortization, that's your current payment on those bonds, principal and interest. That net rate again of 5%, 
to go to the box on the right hand side after the refunding, the hypothetical refunding, to see if we could lock in the rate today, it would be about 3.13%. So lowering the rate from 5% to 3.13%, not changing any of the terms on the bonds, basically just like refinancing your mortgage. Um, we're keeping the same payment dates, but just lowering the rate that would generate a savings of about $130,000, 129 and a net present value savings of 3.32%. Now this would be net revenue, or uh, net savings um, to the TIF district. All costs have been included. So this would be the net, net savings number, just not like this is the savings number and then you gotta pay costs on top of that. So this is kind of net. Yeah. Now page eight, this is this, basically the same schedule as we saw previously, if you remember that coverage number I talked about. Um, what we're looking at here is new project funding. $2 million for infrastructure improvements, street improvements in the TIF. If the, the villagers were to borrow $2 million, pay a while of the TIF revenues, what would that do to the coverage and how would we structure that? So we're structuring this in the same way so the bonds mature when the TIF matures. And we're not assuming any growth in the TIF revenues. We're assuming the same growth that you currently have, knowing that that's most likely going to go up, but we're being very, extremely conservative here. Uh, no growth in any revenues, keeping the same revenues. What does that do to the coverage? You see the coverage goes down slightly, but we structured the bonds so we're at least 1.35 times coverage throughout, if not more, in every year. This generates $2 million. The net rate going out to 2029 is 3.78%. So this is the resolution that you have in front of you um, for the new money for the, to net to $2 million for the projects. Um, that's basically what that resolution states. It begins the authorization process for that, that bond issue. So that's what we're looking at today is the old 2 a refinancing and then the new money for the $2 million for the uh, TIF projects. And now the other opportunity that I had mentioned is the 08 and the 09 bonds, which we could do next year. And what does that savings look like? Now if we look at page 9, I've broken out the current amortization on the left of the 08, 9, 08 bonds and the 09 bonds, the principal interest payments. That net rate combined of those two is about 5.74%. If we could lock in the rates today, which we can't because of the tax rules, we can't do it until next September. But if we could, the village would uh, generate about a million one ninety three in interest savings. That rate is three point seven six percent. Now we're not going to know what that is until we get closer to that date. That process can begin uh, next year. But just being hypothetical here, if interest rates go up fifty basis points, which is one half of one percent or it goes down 50 basis points, what does that do to the savings? That's the last two columns that are shown on that page. So plus 50 basis points, so if rates go up to 4.28%, that savings number is still strong, but it drops down to about 715,000. If rates go down, that number jumps way up to about a million seven. So just to give you an idea of a range, 50 less, 50 above, where we would be. And then page 10, just to summarize all of this, all the refinancings, um, if rates don't change and we're able to lock everything at the current rates, that net savings to the village from the TIF account would be a million three twenty two. If rates go up 50 basis points, it's 845,000, go down about a million eight, a million eight thirty seven, it goes down 50 basis points. Then just the last page I'd like to cover is the estimated timeline. How does this all come together? That's shown on page 11. I've highlighted the board meeting dates, so the board actions that we need to occur. Uh, obviously the first step is where we, uh, where we are today, kind of laying it all out, presenting it, answering questions, um, presenting everything, the, the refinancing this year, the refinancing next year, the new money, basically everything, timeline, etc. Um, there'd be no action that's gonna occur obviously tonight. 
But if there's, if you were to proceed, that action would then occur at your next board meeting, which would be next uh, next week, next Tuesday. Then we would begin putting together all the information on the bonds for this year. Um, at the uh, one of the October meetings, there'd be the public hearing on the new money bonds, and then we'd come back in November for the last board action, which would be the last uh, the last authorization for the board, and we'd be pricing bonds right around Thanksgiving. Give or take a week before or after Thanksgiving, that's when we would actually lock in the interest rate of the bonds. And then we would close the bond issue in December. And that would be for the O2 A's and then the netting the $2 million for the new projects. And then we'd start the process again. We could start it next May, next June for the refunding uh, of the O8 and the O9 bonds, which would occur in a similar type of timing. As, uh, as this issue. So that's basically a lot of info on a small nutshell, but uh, I don't know if anybody had any questions for myself or for Chuck. So I happen to notice the Bloomberg screenshot showed mid yields uh, with quite a range on the low and the high there. And knowing that we don't have any kind of a current bond rating, um, how confident are you that you could get us a rate pretty darn close to what you've got in this presentation. Yeah, we've uh, we've been pretty conservative on the rate. Um, we're using non-rated rates, which are extremely conservative. Um, we're not trying to be aggressive here. So we feel, you know, currently, I mean, assuming no major jump in interest rates in the bond market, we, uh, we feel pretty confident we could get these rates. And all of our current bonds are refunding bonds? And we would be issuing the new ones as refundable bonds as well. The old, I think. Oh, okay. The 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 O two bonds were refunding bonds from nineteen ninety four bonds. Uh, so those would be a refunding of a refunding. The two thousand eight two thousand nine bonds were original bonds, and this is the first time those would be refunded. Two million dollars for the O two A and B. I'm sorry, for the O two uh, bond. The for the road project. So the next year's bond. I'm mean, sorry, the O eight O nine bond. What are those be used for? Like, do we have plans for those already? Well, right now for the O eight and O nine bonds, no no plans other than to produce savings yes, to the savings. tip district. Now, if we create the savings that we think will occur, there would be opportunity to, to take those savings and do another new money bond issue for more improvements in the industrial part. We, we haven't quite analyzed it that far, but that would be the potential. Okay, so long, long term, three of the four issues we're talking about, the three are refunding existing bonds, keeping the current maturity dates, issuing new bonds with those same maturity dates at lower interest rates, thereby saving us interest long term to the TIF districts, just so I'm regurgitating in terms I understand, right? Uh, the fourth item that we're talking about is issuing a new bond for $2 million out of the TIF district, and that is to go for improvements, infrastructure improvements within that TIF district itself. Can you speak to that, or should our economic director be development director be speaking to those improvements. Okay, we had uh, some conversations with Robinson Engineering and with um, Public Works Director Kevin Weller uh, with respect to the improvements that are needed out there. There's some uh, major infrastructure improvements that need to be made. Um, there are some water mains that are deteriorated to a point to where um, the west side of the village could be uh, completely cut off because of the uh, condition of those. So um, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure improvements that are necessary um, over on the, the west side of the village within the TIF district. Um, there's also road improvements that have not been done since the 1990s um, that need to be addressed um, with respect to that. And the way that the original bonds ordinances were written is that this this money goes into a waterfall. So, 
whatever money is left over after the, the debt service is paid on the bonds, 90 cents out of every dollar goes to the original developer, which is DP Partners. The village gets a dime. So if we did nothing, they would actually realize the 90%, you know, which the bond ordinances do allow us to, um, to take additional monies to do the improvements. Um, alternately, the, the money that we would save would go to um, the, the waterfall, the 90-10 split. That's true of all TIFs in general, though, that if whatever we have left at the end of the TIF, if it's unspent, that 90-10 applies and it goes back to the developer. Well, it's not necessarily at every TIF, so but it's, it's depends it's on ours the, anyway, the, it is. Right, the redevelopment. So it's to our advantage to spend and develop those, t those areas, I don't want to call them territories, so those areas to make them, um, you know, better than, than what they already are. And to make them more viable for economic development opportunities for, you know, future development as well. So if we're talking about issuing a new bond at the same time that we've got these other bonds in place, and you're already talking about the minimum 1.25 or 125% of, of um, the, the numbers that we're looking at here, if we issue that addition, additional 2 million, how does that impact? Because you've got numbers for the 2 million, but I would think since you're taking from the same revenue pot, um, it may impact that, or is that already being taken into consideration with these numbers? Yeah, if you look at page eight, it is a consideration. So I'm sure I'm adding in the projected debt payments for the 2 million on page eight. That's the middle column that's in yellow. And then the far right hand column, I've adjusted the coverage number also taken into account that uh, two million dollars in new money and we're being conservative where we're not adjusting any of the revenue and i've actually not included any of the savings from the refinancings here as well so let's say all the refinancings go away worst case scenario which we don't think is going to happen if it did i mean we're taking that ultra conservative approach here to make sure we're still above that 125 code so the 125 coverage is a, from an overall perspective, not an individual bond perspective. Correct. All your TIF debt combined compared to the TIF increment needs to be 125. Minimum. Minimum, yeah. I have a question. Um, the, um, when you talk about the No, the tax dollars will not go for the taxpayers. One of the most important things and one of the great advantages that you said over the years is that all of your TIF districts are self-supporting. So all of the bonds, the several additional of those TIF districts have always been paid for taxes generated by the TIF district. So those companies that send in the industrial park have been paying for those bonds and that's going to continue under this, this proposal as well. Plus, that's not getting anything. 
So my thing is that, can you please explain to me how it would be beneficial for us to be, be uh, financing this tip where we could get residents can benefit from improved infrastructure, improved police safety, things of that nature. You know, so. Okay, I'm, I'm unable to answer your question fully. Uh, I, I would have to just point out a couple of things about TIF. Uh, TIF is an economic development tool. It was created by the General Assembly for Economic Development Purposes. So the specific purpose that these TIFs were put in place for was to attract industry into the village. I would have to say that's, that's been very successfully done. And that's what's made the TIF successful. TIFs, um, fortunately or unfortunately, were not designed to cover cost outside of the TIF district. I would argue that regardless of what your decision in terms of how you use the money, it always makes sense to pursue refunding opportunities when the savings would create an overall benefit to the village. And I would argue that by doing this, you create an overall benefit to the village, although I cannot argue that it's going to benefit infrastructure throughout the village just within the tenth district. Well, I'm in agreement with you that it's going to benefit the, uh, uh, the village, you know. Uh, we have been here for 10, 15, 20 years. We have not seen any benefits. So we'd like to know where, I mean, what about us? And, and all I can do is answer honestly about the TIF. The TIF district is designed to spend money within the TIF district. It probably will not achieve all of the objectives <coughs> of this, just laid right out. So, and that, that's just the honest answer. Well, I mean, good. I appreciate the honest answer because uh, it seems like to me that, like I said, it's going to benefit the village. It's going to benefit the TIF two or three. So I don't think that it's going to be a TIF district will help, help the TIF, put the infrastructure to the TIF will help the businesses stay within the village. I would argue not to do anything, not to, to continue to improve the TIF district, to keep the companies in South Village, as opposed to World County or Northern Indiana. It has some benefit to the village, and at the very least, it doesn't help the village for those companies to to go elsewhere. So by accomplishing this, you have lots of objectives, I understand. This will at least help you with your economic development objectives. Uh, unfortunately, probably will not help you with all of the objectives. Okay, one more uh, thing I want to uh, uh, put out there is that, uh, as you know, for the last 10 or 15 years, there has been a 
downsizing of, or not downsizing of, reduction of um, malls, you know, through, throughout the sun plan, whatever. This one. But, you know, so my, my thing again is, why are we putting all this money into two and three, when we know both malls are going by the wayside, and we're going to spend two million dollars on two and three, when you got places like River Oaks, uh, over there Max and uh, Olivia Fields, those have so many stores up there that's empty. Those were tips at one time, and now we're going to try to put two million dollars in a tip that has been losing money because you have taken the money one point million, one point one million dollars, and put it up to tip three. That I mean that I can run. I don't have the biggest money, and, and put it over to tip three. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's a waste of our time and our money. You know, we need to be concentrating on something that's more feasible that's going to benefit residents here. Excuse, excuse me, excuse me, before, mm -hmm. before we go any further. First of all, it was explained, and I have to concur. We're very fortunate to have a tip that we can actually take money and use it and have this much money in the tip because eventually, within that tip, we're obligated to fix those streets. We're not, and the money that comes out of that tip has to go, and it does go forth to fix up those streets in that area within the tip, that's what it's for. The reason why tips were created, because a lot of companies didn't want to come in and pay property tax, they didn't want to pay for schools, they didn't want to pay the library. They wanted to come in, and if they, and if you resist and say you don't want to do that, they'll go down the road to somebody else that will do that. What benefits you get from the tip? You get sales tax, you get jobs, you get um, water, because we sell our own water. Those are things that you, that you get from a tip. We do get an administrative drawdown, which we use, but it's, that's not a whole lot, but that helps take care of the services that we have to provide in those tips. That's your streets, that's your public works, which is streets, your fire, and your police officers. So for this tip to be self-sustaining, and you don't have to go to the people, anybody else, to make these payments is something great. We're fortunate to be able to have that. Not to create a mall, but to maintain what we have. And the money in that tip cannot be used for anything else but what's needed in that tip. And it helps attract more businesses. And it's not just, it's businesses that have jobs and large jobs created with it, and that helps the community. I don't care no one says, if you have a job and you're right by home, a decent way, what more can you ask for in that part of it? Quite naturally, yes, it's not high, it may not be high paying jobs, but it's something better than what we have. And if we're able to refinance those, that sounds like you do in your home. If you're able to refinance your home for a lower rate, why not do that? And that's what we're trying to do here. I just, so, just want to point out that um, the tip does pay for itself, it is self-sufficient. Page three, it shows the revenue versus the, the, the debt service that we have out there. And we're always above that 125% that we talked about. So I don't think the tip is losing money. Are there any more questions? Yeah, I was, I was just going to comment too, Trustee Brewer. I heard you say something about losing a million dollars. These tips are not losing money. They're, they're making money and have a reserve set aside. So I'm not sure where you think that you, you feel like they're losing money. I, I, I do believe I said they're taking the money out of tip, tip two and transferring it over tip three. Tip two and three are contiguous. They're contiguous. They're contiguous. They run together. They're both tip, tip two and tip three. It's not taking money out for the number. Just what you're saying, then, that's not right. You're saying I that, but that's not correct. Tip two and three are contiguous. So therefore, you're not taking money out of tip two and putting it in tip three. Don't say that because that's wrong. That's not true. However, the tip money that you guys are generating are for the street roads in the tip district. I have no problems about who's supposed to get what. I'm asking, and I'm going to say it again, that the businesses are benefiting from tip two and three 
What about the residents? What are the residents going to get? You're saying that we can't get anything. I'm saying that there's some kind of way that we should be able to use that TIF money to benefit two or three, some kind of way. Maybe so, if you can, uh, trustee, uh, if you can, trustee, if you can write an ordinance, have a law passed downstate to make that happen, I have, you, 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 can, you can ask that, but right now that's illegal and you can't do it because that's what they, that's why they come. They wouldn't come, as I said before, the businesses that come out nowadays in different areas are looking for tips, class A, and any other tax exempt that they can get to come and do business with your town. If not, if you don't have that, just go to where it's at. If I could just add you know, one more point to what you said. Um, while it's true that the businesses are benefiting from the TIF, the businesses are creating the taxes that are being used in the TIF that makes it self-supporting. So those businesses self-supporting, it's not costing the residents anything for them to be self-supporting. It's just bringing companies and jobs to the community. But those businesses, if I can add to what you're saying, though, those businesses generate, generate revenue to, to the village, not the TIFs, in business licenses, the annual fee that the village receives from them, and the sales tax from anything that is uh, a retail sale. So, for instance, with the new development going in, with the gas, the restaurants that are going in there, we will be receiving sales tax. So while the rest of it is predominantly industrial, this is a good source of retail sales tax revenue that, as you may recall, when we passed that ordinance and the numbers came through to us, we're talking about well over, what, 500, almost $580,000 a year is the anticipated revenue to the village, not the TIFs, that will be going to the village for us to use for things for the residents. Excuse me, excuse me. Can, can we we're still try to have a meeting? Thank you. Are there any more questions for? I just have a quick question. What are you charging us to do this? Well, as I mentioned before, the, the numbers include the cost of issuance. So what you're seeing, there's no additional cost on top of that. And so what we're including, for example, for the O2A bond issue is approximately uh, about 2.5% total cost of issuance. So, so for every um, like million dollars, the total cost is approximately $25,000. So about 2.5% of the total amount issued. So depending on what's issued, what be, what's being refinanced in the future, uh, we're using a conservative total cost of issuance amount of about two and a half percent. As long as it all built in there, let me assure you of something else. No, no, nobody has paid anything until we're back before you with contracts that you approve. You will see what the amounts are and you'll be able to react to that. Page two of the presentation. Yeah, uh, the trustee asked what is the balances on the bond issues, and that is shown on page two of the presentation that I passed out. Uh, so the O two A is, is approximately five million forty-five thousand. Yeah, that's the balance right now. Five million forty-five thousand. It's that first column on page two. The only additional debt would be the two million. Okay. Everything else is going to be just refinancing, like you refinancing your mortgage. Okay. And yeah. How much will be the the payments for the additional amounts? Well, that's shown on um, the current the current payments are shown on the next page, page three. 
and the refinancing examples, if you look at all of the refinancings, page 10 summarizes the three bond issues we'd be refinancing. The principal payments, the interest payments, page 10. Well, every year it's, it's going up slightly, um, but it jumps around. So this current year, or calendar year 2019, because you've made some payments this year, it's about a million eight. Yeah, depending on which bond issue, we, we could go through the years, but the, the, the important thing to remember about the TIF bonds is that the money comes in each year is sent directly to the trustee on behalf of the village. Right, now The key thing to remember as you look at the payments due in December, that money's already in the bank. And a portion of it has been in the bank on at least 18 months back. That cycle is repeat, repeat every year, so that by the time the bonds are due, the money is already on account with the trustee. So it's, it's not like you've got to come up with the money. The money's already been generated by the TIF. It's already been paid to the trustee. And the trustee is just waiting for the payment date. You know, I'm sort of If I could just say one, yeah. one, one shot at something right there, as, as, as Bob mentioned, that's never, ever, ever been the case with the TIF bonds. Okay. There are some other bond issues outside of the TIF district, which were issued in, I think, 2007 or 2008. A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, and C bonds. Uh, those bonds that have been a struggle by the village to pay those on an annual basis. The good news is that the biggest one, the 2007 A bonds, the, the last payment for those bonds is going to be just December, and then those go away. The other two bond issues are smaller in size, and hopefully will be a lot more manageable by the village to pay But the big one is going away after December 1st, okay. and you are no longer have any problem. If you do nothing, okay, just a separate with respect to this. If, if, you don't, if you don't do anything, you, you, you lose an, an opportunity to save money for the village, which you can do as your option. Uh, we would re recommend that you don't do that, that you go ahead and take the savings and benefit the village. But if you do nothing, then it's just the status quo. You know? Existing bonds, that sort of stays as they, as they are. The TIF continues to pay for those. And eventually in 2029, the bonds all mature and you're going to be fine. If, so if you do it, you're going to be marginally better off by doing it. Okay, so we have savings, but the savings go back to the tip. If you, don't do any, if you don't do anything, you don't have the savings we're talking about tonight. You only have the savings we're talking about tonight if you take the actions that you're working on. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you guys very much. Sorry, oh. I have one more question. I don't think it's for them. I think it's for you and, and the economic development director. The uh, ordinance is for 2.5 million. So and I, I think it says to not exceed 2.5 million. So is it safe to assume we're talking about 2 million for the bond plus all the costs okay. equate 2.5 or less? Yeah, 2.5 uh, 
wise, and that's just a not to exceed number. So if we were looking at the two million, you're probably issuing about two million fifty thousand or less. But it was just in there as a buffer. They always added the attorneys always add an additional amount because you can't go over the number you offer. Okay, um, the next item is the ordinance that has to be um, presented the next week. Um, is that the ordinance that you were referring to, correct? Yes, the ordinances that you have before you tonight will be up for consideration next week. Yes. Uh, we would ask that you take a vote on that. Yes. As your advisor, we would recommend that you approve it. Okay. You could, you, I think you did send a did you send a copy or? Oh, okay, good enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next item. Um, discussion uh, for trustee grant about the civic upgrade. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So about, uh, I think, two weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I brought to the board a uh, <clears throat> proposal for the civic system upgrade. Um, it was a packet that I gave you guys. Um, hopefully you had a chance to look it over uh, in that time period. Uh, so basically, what's kind of uh, in the document here is that uh, we would like to just pretty much upgrade our, our software. It's pretty old, it's pretty outdated. Uh, it's not, not mistaken, it's two versions behind. So we just kind of want to get up to date. It's uh, a little bit uh, wonky to work with uh, if you're familiar with computers and uh, software uses access, uh, which is pretty much a database that's not very friendly. Uh, now the new SIFA system, if, uh, you know, the proposal has uh, is in Excel, which is a little bit more friendly to work with. Um, it gets, uh, it's pretty much, it gives the financial uh, director and whoever else is on the senior team a chance to kind of uh, run reports pretty uh, smoothly, efficiently, and easily. Um, so I think that the last conversation we had, um, we, we were kind of going through the comparison of whether we should do the uh, non-hosted versus hosted. Um, so we can kind of just go ahead and go over that, uh, ask any questions that we may have and just have a discussion on it uh, so that we can uh, vote on it next week um, on, the, uh, the, uh, on the, the next board meeting. So does anybody have any questions on this? Does anybody have a chance to look over it already? How long did you have this out here for what? Uh, I want to say it was the last committee meeting, uh, which was the, the one right after uh, National Night Out, I believe. I believe. Yeah. Okay, does anyone have any questions on this um, civic upgrade and update? Uh, if we do this, uh, we've got a choice, right, between hosted and, and uh, non hosted. And my personal opinion would be to keep the hosted. Uh, that way, the vendor, you know, as, as they make upgrades, that's going to get pushed through to us automatically versus if we do the non-hosted, then the onus is on us to keep staying current with their upgrades. And that's what's gotten us into the bind that we're in right now with our, our system being several versions behind. So just my two cents worth, I would vote for the, uh, the hosted option. Okay, I just, I'll just, so we can know what to put on the agenda, I'll go around and ask, is there a preference, hosted or not hosted? Bernice, is there a preference? Uh, yes, so, 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 so Gerald, his opinion, uh, he's in support of the upgrade. Okay. 
what Gerald was coming to was the committee meeting uh, to talk about cybersecurity policy, which is totally different from this. Okay. So he's in support of this. Okay. So I'm asking if it, um, your preference, O for the nine O's. Oh, we're at the money for the moment. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. Okay, then we have a question we put on the. Uh, Next week's agenda for the posted version of that grade. I just had a quick question. Where's the money coming from? You see, you have to do an additional for the, to the budget. You have to add it to the budget. Where are we, where are we going to get this? Uh, what is it, 17000 So, from my understanding, the, uh, the money for this was coming from part of it was coming from the sale of the, uh, the laundromat, which I believe was $40,000. And Joe, well, okay. I believe it was 40000 and that was just where it came from. That's all I need to do. Okay, um, the next item is the rental agreements for the Welch Park and for Veterans, I'm sorry, Veterans Memorial Welch Park and the um, Hazel Center. Um, we were given um, copies of the, hey, I'm going to go to the, um, Hazel Center first. The copies that you were given, the old copies, didn't work to complete. So I'm going to pass out the new, or I'm sorry, the different, because they only have one page of the ones that you have. If you didn't have a back page, it, look on my, it was the front and back side. For the old, for the old. Okay, did the old one have the front and back side? No. So I'm passing out the ones that do have the old ones. They do have the frame background, right? So everyone should have that.
the checklist. What do you mean by checklist? You know, cleaning, yeah, cleaning, you know, who checks it, that's on the reality. Oh, that's, 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 that's standard. That's in, um, okay. That's up, that's at the top of the second page. If damage in any other area of the center occur, or uh, in too many of the center occurs, and or damage or any loss of equipment in the center occurs, the lease will be held financially responsible for any such damage and or loss of equipment. Charges will reflect the repair or replacement cost and time required for the time for the same. If the cost of repairing the damage to an item is greater than the deposit, the excess amount will be billed to the lease. If it's necessary for the village staff to complete the checklist, the leasing will be charged at the rate of $20 per hour at the time needed to complete the items on the checklist. The minimum cha charge for the village completion of the checklist is $20. But I'm saying they need an actual checklist. So uh, whenever you get one, they just prepare what they have. Oh, when they, when, they, when, they rent, yeah. when, they, when they rent it, they're going to be escorted over and they're going to see everything that's there and they'll get that list at that time. It's the same list, it's just um, equipment. Um, but they're, they're gonna be as well, they won't be, they won't go over there by themselves when they first initially um, set it up. They'll see exactly what it is and we'll note it with them at that time. If anything that they, when they came in was broken or vice versa that wasn't broken and it became that way. So that's the Hazel Center contract. So like I said, if there's any questions, um, you know, anything that you feel that is different, or you want anything that you feel we have a question about, we have a week, but I will bring this still uh, right now to the um, board next week we vote on for this particular one. The next one is the Welch Veterans Memorial Park Rental House. And the new one is basically the same. So there wasn't many, there wasn't, I don't think I had any changes, and I didn't have any changes on this one at all. And there is a, there is a, provision in there for, and it was in their other one for items that are prohibited in the park. And take a look at those items. Um, they've always been here. That's nothing new, but it's a lot of different things. Glass or bottles, glass bottles or containers, alcohol beverages, golf, abusive, obscene language, graffiti, gang-like activities, fire, firearms, and fireworks. Um, Fortune telling, <laughs> games of chance or gambling, all animals, and camping overnight stays, or overnight stays. This was in the old one, so it's kept it in there. Um, I don't think any, some of those things exist anymore, but it's in there for a reason, just in case. So if you have this, if you have any questions, I, like I stated on the other one, um, let me know. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm looking at this, and I'm curious to know why we don't have something similar to the community center about damage of property and the lessee being billed for that damage in excess of the security deposit. I'm looking for similar language to the other document that sh I think should be added to it. You know, looking under the property cleanup on page two, it's just talking about paying a security deposit and you get in the original state right. and then the deposit being returned. It doesn't talk about what if you've damaged any of the property or left a mess, you know, because um, as we know, some, some of the, I've seen instances where there's been enough trash left behind that it wasn't all cleanly left in the cans that were there. It was a little bit strewn about. 
that public works had a little bit more to do than just picking up paint, you know, the, the trash cans and emptying those. Um, and I would when think put, that we should probably put something similar. But on the property cleanup, it states that if the users of the park must pay a security deposit like I all and assume the responsibility to leave the said property in its original state. Right, and if they deposit. damage something, we don't have anything in here that says that they're liable for the damages. Or am I missing that? Um, no, it's not in here. That part is not in here as far as if something damaged. Um, I can hold off on that one because the, the only thing about that, um, a lot of times, to with the community center is open and closed um, area. So if you, if you lock it up with the park, someone has a, something there at 6 o'clock and we're not able to be there to make sure that it, the garbage we see and the garbage is built into the rental. But if someone comes and, and breaks up a table, and if we're not there to have someone there when they come back, so there's no keys to give them. But if we are there, if and we, we know are, that it is are. due to that event, yeah. there's nothing here protecting the village for that damage. Yeah. Okay, I mean, I can put that in there, but I'm going to have to run that by council, or, I mean, um, the attorney to make sure that there's nothing, because there's been being outside, and I mean, you know, so I, okay, I'll, I'll hold off on that one and then get the uh, clarification. Well, I think that's where the verbiage is. If damage occurs, it can be pointed back to the event if it, in if question, right. then this is what happens. Right. right. Okay, I'll, I'll hold off on that one and come back with something for the uh, park. So I'll just have on the agenda for this, the rental of the community. Um, the next item we're going to go to would be public comments and the general comments from the trustees and mayor after public comment. All questions and comments shall be directed to the mayor. Each speaker may comment on any matter pertaining to the business or village. Each speaker will allow one opportunity to speak for up to three minutes and may not engage, engage in debate or counter discussion. And if it gets to the point where it gets unruly, I will suspend the questions. So I'm hoping that if, if we go back and forth and I cannot control, and the one wants to listen, that'll be the last question to answer that night, and we'll go to adjourn. The last so question is If it gets to that point, if it gets to that point, I'm hoping that it doesn't get to that point. But if it gets to that point where we're going back and forth, and they don't want to adhere to the rule. It's done. It's done. Yes, ma'am. Please don't start my time yet. I have a question on what you just said. You read all that, and it's been going on for a long time, and I agree with it. But when I get up here and I talk, and my three minutes is done, and I've asked you questions, and you answer a question like you didn't really understand it, you don't allow me to say that isn't what I said. There's no debate, so I have to wait a week to come back. But you have to decide. Are you going to let select few debate? There will be no debate. Last week you debated with three people. And I wrote their names down if you'd like to know them. Now I'm ready to start my three minutes. Huh? Go ahead, dude. Okay, another thing is, I don't know if it's true or not, and I don't usually say things I can't prove, but I read it on the internet oh, that well. you indicated that um, if any employee joined the residence march on October 13th, they would be fired immediately, and I wanted to let you know that according to the state's attorney's office, you can't do that or they can sue you. Okay, now I'm getting on to the good stuff. I would like to know about $250,000 that was transferred from the water fund on November 2nd. 
I'd like to know where the money was transferred to and what the money was to be used for. Word has it, nobody knows where this $250,000 is. I'd like to know if this is going to be something that Mohan is going to be blamed for. And I do know that a prior um, treasurer uh, heard from your inside circle that she was going to get blamed for that $250,000. And that's one of the reasons why she resigned. So I'd like to know where that money is and what was done with it. Secondly, I'd like to know why it takes almost an act of God to get an accounts receivable uh, report. <laughs> Secondly, one of the first things you did upon taking office was to hire people. You hired an HR lady who did not have municipal experience, let alone police experience. Yet she was assigned to work with the um, police union and their contract. And she's still doing it. This is going on a long, long time. Nine months. Nine months or more. The amount of overtime that the police department is being paid at this time would have paid for three officers. You have a budget for the police department. X amount of money was set aside for X amount of police officers. Three resigned. That money for them is still sitting in that budget. Why isn't it being used for them? It wouldn't take that much. Plus, we've got reserve, remember? Talk about raises. A lot of raises were given out, but none to the police department. Administrative people received raises, but our police department didn't, and that HR lady's trying to convince them to take a 1% raise after the kind of garbage they have to put up with. And I did tell you about the pictures on the internet um, about the chairs and stuff, and I'd like to tell you that there is absolutely no soap if you go to the bathroom at the police department, you have no soap to wash your hands with. Your time is up now. Your time is up. Let me try to answer. First of all, I guess if it's on Facebook, it must be true. But I'm going to tell you this now. This is not Facebook. This is here. I never did, nor have I ever even mentioned to anyone. I don't know where that came from. Not even in passing about a march and about employees. If they, if they were to march in this particular march about losing their job. So that's a fabrication. It's a lie. And I'll, I'll continue to say that. As far as the $250,000, I explained it over and over again. I explained it again. Mohan came to me two days before that and told me that we have a payment, a bond payment due in a day. So I asked, okay, he said the money's not there. I said, what happened? He said, he used it. The money came in in August. Like all of our levy money come in, it was the second um, installment of our taxes. The money came in in August. I wasn't aware of it. I was told at the last minute. And so I didn't have a chance to really do anything but asked him to transfer it from the TIF, and I also told the board after the fact and why I did it, because if I had not done that, the village, every resident in here would have been levied for the full amount of that particular bond, which is something like $8 million. So in order for that not to happen, yes, I did, and I told the board what happened. That, and then eventually we got our money back from the TIF, or I'm sorry, deposited back into the TIF from our TIF draw. But at the time, I had, to, I had no other choice but to do that than to try to wait and say, okay, we don't pay this, we'll do this, and then I have to explain to all, and myself included, why your bill, your tax bill went up 
to cover that particular bond because when you don't pay a bond to those things that you should be asking whoever it is that you guys talk to, when you don't pay a bond, they want the whole thing. They don't want just the deal paid. As far as uh, HR, I didn't hire HR. I continued her service and expanded it. HR was hired under the administration of Hanks, under the Orange Group, and he hired her. I just used her more. And am I using her now? Yes. Because last time I remember, when I was trusted back in 16 and 17, well, 16 and before, our lawyer bill was $600,000 and $700,000 a year. That was coming from negotiations and everything else they were doing. So this year, our lawyer bill may be $100,000. Maybe. But it's, it's, it's all in writing. It's all on accounts payable. It's all in the audits. How much we paid last year for um, our professional services, which is your lawyers and some of the engineering work. Also, raises. I don't know where you got that from. Nobody got a raise. So I, I, I don't understand that one. So again, whoever the information is coming out of, no one has gotten a raise. And the last time I looked, I cannot remember the last time the trustees got a raise. I think since I was trusted, I think I got raised twice, and that's in 11 years. So there's no person else under my administration got a raise. What happened before that, I don't know. I have no idea. But no person under my administration, be it personnel or be it supervisory or, 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 or uh, um, a person hourly, no one got a raise. Thank you. I will debate the answers next week. W. Williams, Sonny Village. A few weeks ago, I came and talked about the website. And Mayor, you told me you were going to take care of it within the week that you had already been working on it. We haven't, uh, I don't know if the audit's done for this year, but it's not on the website. Accounts Payable has been put on the website since December of 2016. There hasn't been an ordinance put on the website since September of 2017. No minutes on the website since October 2017. The committees that are listed on the website don't exist. We don't have a housing committee, a human relations committee. If we have an intergovernmental, intergovernmental relations committee, I don't know where it is. Neighborhood watch, beautification. If we have a beautification committee, if we do, that planter outside there needs to be attended to. We don't have community outreach, as far as I know. And most importantly, we don't have public relations in the website committee. Maybe some of these things would have been addressed. As the former village clerk, I know for a fact that if I didn't get the accounts payable up, if I didn't get the minutes up, if I didn't get the ordinances up, South Village, Illinois was out there the very next day. As a resident who was unable to attend board meetings for a solid year, I find myself trying to investigate what happened in that year, and I have no way to do it. The website, really, if you're not going to update it, take it down, because it's no good to the residents. It serves us no purpose whatsoever, especially for those of us who cannot attend the meetings. So, Mayor, you said you were going to work on it. You said you were already working on it. Can we do something about that? Is that it? Yeah, but, yes. <laughs> okay, if you call it, has not been completed because we're still waiting on the order from the police and fire. I understand that there was a problem with the, I guess one of the people that were doing the audit, his credibility was questioned or something to that effect and they had to get another person to do that. So that's why that's being held up. So and when, they, when they get through with theirs, ours is done. Everything that we need to be done as far as all is done, but all of those will not sign off on it until they get a complete all from the police and fire. And so we're waiting on, on, on that to happen. Um, as far as the website, um, as you said, there's committees on there. There are committees that are listed on there, you have to be right, that do not exist. Some of them being a housing committee, I mean, the housing, when I became mayor, as soon as I became mayor, they resigned right then and there, and I wasn't able to fulfill, you know, um, that committee, I mean, I get a lot of people that come every week 
and complain, but then no one stands up there and says, I want to be a part of this committee or that committee. So right now, that committee doesn't exist because I don't have people to make that happen. When I do get volunteers to uh, that want to come and, and, and help something or do something other than tell me what I haven't done, then yes, we will be able to do that. But right now, we don't have that, those committees um, as far as the housing committee because we don't have the volunteers to make it happen. As you know, that was a volunteer committee. So um, as far as the website is concerned, um, yes, we're, and it, it sounds cliche, but yes, we're still working on it. And uh, hopefully we'll get the minutes and the uh, everything that needs to be taken care of there as soon as we as soon as possible. I'm just giving you an uh, honest answer. I'm not going to sit here and promise anything because I don't know, but I'm working on that particular item. Well, thank you, because most of that stuff is readily available. Okay. The committees that don't exist can easily be removed. Thank you. Are you next, sir? I hope so. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, uh, Mayor Burgess, I came in here like smoking. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your name uh, is? I apologize to everyone here. Your name is, sir? Tom Lewis. L-E-W-I-S, first name, Thomas. T-H-O-M-A-S. I don't want to wait like three minutes on this. I came in here like a smoking chimney because I had a call this afternoon from my daughter, I've got eight grandchildren, 300 miles away, telling me she was afraid to come into this village because the news media got all the way down to her. Now I know you can't do anything about it. We elect you for our welfare. These trustees are elected. Now, I'll tell you one thing. You people weren't elected by very many folks, Burgess, and that, to me, a demeaning thing to you. You know how it went. 1,200 votes, maybe, for all Tertullius, where we got 10.5 thousand people at this village? Where are they? Where are these seats over here with the people? You know what? I know why? We know why. Because you don't have that many homeowners in this village. You've got investors that are buying this, these houses in here. You've got renters. And they, would, they give two cents about what's happening in this village. I was a renter. They travel. They go. Whatever it's available for them. That's the problem in here. The main thing, all this jargon about the infrastructure is great. We need that. But it feels where it begins. You need two legs to walk forward. Two legs. And where are we going? We're going to the park where we ain't going to have any residents here because we're going to be moving out. And then where is your tax money going to come from? From your residential businesses? Can you depend on that? Do you want this to wind up like it was hundreds of years ago with TPs over here? Now that might sound like a joke to you, but that's what's happening. And that's what may happen. This social media that went down that far, I wish it had never went down there. And when I was here talking to you, please, just consider what I'm saying. Give me a little time. When I talk to you before, I don't want my three minutes cut off is what I'm saying. And talk, you can talk, look at them all you want. What I want to say to you is, give us some help, will you? We need police protection. Why has Fort High Scott, Cook County, and we don't have it here? Why are we under made by 50% on our police force? I don't like coming to these meetings. When I, got, when I came into this village, excuse my being ticked off, but when I came into this village, I did not even know where the police department was for a couple of years. I worked a lot of hours. My wife had to tell me. And when Mayor Pesel was here, I had no problem. Now, I know you inherited a lot of this stuff from administration to administration. You got your hands full. But you've been a trustee here for at least 12 years. You know what the hell you were getting into over here. You knew what you were getting into. And I, I give God's grace and he helps you because I want to see you get forward. I want to see you get elected the next time if you can do it. Nobody's been doing it. Thank you very much. Like they always say on TV, God bless America and God bless all good because we need it.
My name is Linda Washington, and I'm here to talk about last week when I was up talking about social media, and I excused myself out. And when I reviewed the tape, I heard you there make a comment that if I'm going to come here every single week and talk about the same exact thing, and you went on to elaborate on how you felt about me coming here every week, that your staff and your people are writing about me on Facebook, and it's an ordinance against writing about Facebook and being on Facebook for employees of the village, and if they have enough gall to put my picture in my name, and I feel I'm as important as they are, I got a family like you got a family. Like, you think it's personal, and you don't want your family and your workers and your people's name mentioned or their pictures, and you think that's personal, my son and my grandchildren and my friends and my family, they feel the exact same way. I don't care nothing about how you feel about that, I'm gonna keep on talking about it. I also want to talk about tonight all these block club captains that are here. They are enraged and they are upset because we don't see anything being done since the Neighborhood Watch was disbanded, Housing Commission was disbanded, the Human Relations Commission was disbanded when you became the mayor. You have somebody that's supposed to be able to public safety in all of these committees and now this village is at a point where nobody is calling, nobody feels safe. I have also told other people in South Village that feel that their families can't come out here for fear of something happening to them, not just only getting shot or being robbed. I have a family that came out here. They said that their relatives went to a local store in South Village, and when they came outside, there was three young men around their vehicle, and they didn't know whether to go on and go to the car because all of them was young ladies. So they called their relative that they was visiting in the village to say, there's three young men standing by our car. I mean, could you come up here? He hopped in his car with friends and went up there. People don't feel safe coming to South Village. They don't feel safe living in South Village. So although you don't, uh, <clears throat> although you don't recognize the Neighborhood Watch Program, and the chief said he does not recognize the Neighborhood Watch Program, the block club captains that are here and those that are not here, they are still watching these blocks anyway. And at some point, I hope that you all do consider all of this extra money that you have to do all of this extra stuff with, putting it back in the community so that we can be safe because we live here. And what the part that we live in is not patrol. You know, usually, I don't comment on comment and accusations. But I, I, I'm tired of hearing lies put out there. And I'm here to, to tell you point blank, first of all. You come every week to talk about whatever you talk about, no problem. I have no problem with that. You point fingers, you accuse, you act, make accusations. Half of them and three quarters of them are lies. Housing Commission, I just stated, they left, they walked out. However, in your dissertation for three minutes, not one time did you say, you just said that we don't have housing. I would like to volunteer for that. I would like to volunteer to get on that. But if you couldn't get what you want, how you want, and when you want it, then you are come up with, well, we don't do this, and we're not going to do that, and we haven't done this. Now, one time have I heard you speak in any of the last four months, other than a neighborhood watch, that you would rather do something to try to help the community out. Let's talk about how many times I came to your office for a year and you won't see me. That's a lie. If the police can't control this mayor, who else is going to do it? Last week we I need a neighborhood asked, watch, we need last somebody. Last week I asked you that I wouldn't go back and forth. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. If you continue to go back and forth, yet you may have to leave. I'm going to respect you, but I am going to ask you for respect. And if you don't want to do that, then yes, you will be asked to leave. I'm merely asking the question. Obviously, you don't want me to talk about what you just said. So you guess what? I'm through. Yes, ma'am. Hello. My name is Miss Cross. I am the Do I have to give my first initial? I. I Cross. Um, I moved, myself and my, my family moved out here because my sister is disabled. She needed a place where she could be free to be outside. We've grown up in the city our whole lives. And, and I, I can tell you this, I never saw a person get shot until I moved down here. That's right. I lived my, I was raised, born and raised on the south side of Chicago. I never had to call my mother to open the front door 
because I have to duck gunshots to get into my own home. That didn't happen on the south side of Chicago. And it's, it, did. it didn't happen where I was on the south side of Chicago. Excuse me. I can only speak from my experience. So that's what I'm here doing, speaking from my experience. I never experienced that growing up where I lived. And, and I will say this, I was active in the neighborhood watch. And to hear, when I heard that it was disbanded, I was disappointed. Now, if, if things went, you know, some way and I'm hearing them wrong, then that's, you know, it is what it is. But if things are wrong, then it should be up to the leadership to put it out there what's right. And, and, and I agree that you can't do everything yourself. You need, you need volunteers. Well then, I have been here for years and years. I've never once ever even seen or heard anyone asking for volunteers for X, Y, and Z. The only thing, I, I sure haven't, the only thing I've ever heard from people is people coming to my house asking that I want to be a blocked up captain. That's the first time, I, I don't know any of you all. I've lived here for years and years and years. I don't know, I only know your name, Mr. Mayor, because you are the mayor, but, but I don't know any government officials, I don't know anyone personally, and I feel that that's a problem in a village this small. We moved out here for a purpose, and I, I promise you, I would love to be out here because I love to uplift my people, but I will move very quickly if I feel that the safety of my family is in such dire risk and it's, 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 it's so detrimental to my family to be out here, I'll go, we'll go, we'll go get a fast. Line going. Hold on, I want to finish. Um, you, you, when you have leadership, you have to be transparent and you have to be as vocal as possible. And for me to have never heard a lot of the issues that we have going on in this village and having been here for at least seven or more years, I think that that means there is something that's not being done, something that's not being put forth out there into the community enough. One of the reasons, and, and I know there are people that have solutions. I have some solutions to some of the crime in this place. Why don't we have a place for children to go and be active instead of roaming the streets? Why don't we have something for, for the community? We don't have things like other villages and other towns and other cities have. At least I haven't seen it. So if I haven't seen it, I apologize. But if I haven't seen it, that also means it's not very clear. Okay, your time is up now. I'm done. Okay. Um, as far as neighborhood watch is concerned now, when I became mayor, um, I had been to neighborhood watch meetings before. And the reason why I was not, because I had talked to the police chief at the time, and um, I asked him also, was it beneficial because the meetings I went to, the few meetings I went to for neighborhood watch, it was a lot of political overtone. That's so, oh, okay, go ahead, sir. I'm sorry. I'm listening. I'm listening. Continue, please. It was a lot of political overtone. So I, myself, I didn't, I didn't feel that we needed to do that. If it was, and then also I heard that you know I'm looking if it's a, a neighborhood watch, you would walk in your neighborhood, not on the other side of the village and be part of neighborhood watch. Now you got a problem because those people on the other side of Torrance Avenue don't know you that you're on the east side of Torrance Avenue and you walk around your neighborhood watch. So unless I could see a something that was organized to show that, okay, we're going to have this, this, badges or something, and you're going to have zones. We had a badge. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, continue, continue, please. I'm trying to hear, I'm trying to hear. Uh, okay. And, and um, I, I saw that and saw something like that, and I have no problem, but that's not what I saw. So that's why I didn't pursue that. And as far as the gunshots, it's unfortunate. I'm so sorry that this is the first time that you saw that here. It happened. But I will tell you this, police don't stop guns. People do. So the only thing we can do is hope that the community, we're talking about the police. The police come every time after the fact. If they knew when it was going to happen, guess what? Most of them would be there. They come to mop up. But your policing is done within your area, within your neighborhood, within whoever you live next door to. So if you have a person that, that you live next door that doesn't ever see anything, you can't bring the police. You have to talk to your neighbor 
and get in, 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 involved in your neighbors and say, okay, we're not going to tolerate it on our block or not in tolerate this in our neighborhood. And I so I'm not going to go back and forth because I was, I was told about that. I don't want to debate with you. I just wanted two points to what you said. I know that it's after the fact when it comes to police, but if more people felt safe to come forward, maybe it wouldn't be so much after the fact. They come forward now. No, they don't. I, 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 hear, I, hear, okay, you know, okay. I hear people okay. come okay. forward. Okay. I'm just saying, okay. and I'm breaking the rules now okay. because I'm going to ask everybody to say what you did. with the neighborhood watch, you may have asked the officers if it was beneficial, but they're not the ones living in the community. Right. If, I, if I'm a resident, if I'm a resident, and I feel that it's being beneficial, why wouldn't you listen to what the residents are? Right. Just a note, just a note. Just Thank something you. to make you think. Thank you. Please, that's that nice. Bad couch. I just want to touch on this volunteerism. Because I recall when you were running for office and your group that were running for office, came up here and talked about the new wave of volunteerism. You had hundreds, and the gentleman sitting right there on the in your seat up there, right by you, said we have new volunteers, we have hundreds. So that, I'd like to know where they are, that's number one. Um, number two, um, fire hydrants. I have been up here week after week after week asking, Where's the fire hydrant list, or have you got a list to tell us how many fire hydrants are not working? This is probably six weeks in a row I've asked about fire hydrants. No answer as of yet. The other issue is the dog issue, which we are going to be addressing, but I just want to update that same individual dog was running loose again this week for many hours and I was told by another resident that that dog attacked his dog by jumping its fence. Now, we have no, uh, no dog catcher, we have no funds to get a dog person. We don't know if these people have licenses for these dogs. We have nobody to check on them. Why can't we find a few dollars somewhere to get some help? Our police need help, we know that. We know we're down officers. They need help. Where's that money going to come from? Thank you. Neighborhood watch. They don't need to get paid. <laughs> Heidi Parker, South Village. I understand that you went to Lincoln Meadows to meet with the residents there on a meet and greet to talk about safety and what your plan is. Mm -hmm. I wondered why you didn't come over to Carroll and Peterson mm -hmm. and meet with the residents over there where things mm -hmm. are happening, the people are affected. The other thing that tells me something, when everything uh, in, the, in the few recent shootings, people are out of the village. They're from Chicago Heights or other places. That tells me that they feel safe to come here because there's no way, do not have enough police. And since you have gotten this additional money, how about putting some additional police in? If we need 35 people here and we have maybe 13 to 18 police, it's time to do something. The next thing I want to touch on is how you can pay almost $50,000 based on proposals, not invoices. I do have a statement from you on a FOIA that says exactly that, that I have everything there is. There's no invoices, just proposals. Very transparent. I think somebody needs to come in and have a look. First of all, as I stated before, I don't know where you get your information from, who you get it from, who's telling you whatever. I didn't go to Lincoln Meadows and do anything. They came here and asked me to come up here. 
to Village Hall to speak with them. They came as a group. I didn't go to Lincoln Village. So where that's coming from, I, like I said, I don't know. And your information, you need to check that one. And as far as um, your other statement, if you feel that that's why they have attorney general and all those other people that go out and, and, and police municipalities, Please, if you feel that's something that's in proprietary that's going on in the village, that's what you need to talk to the AG, as they call it, Attorney General. And because I haven't done anything with any money and, and, and anything to that, to that extent. I'm part of here, but I'm here full time. So, again, accusations upon accusations upon accusations. All of a sudden, everyone wants to accuse. That's fine. I'm big enough to take it. But I'm also big enough to ask, where is the help? And where are you going to help? I'm waiting. One person that comes out, I'm going to help you do X, Y, and Z. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, uh, Bernadine Hopkins. Um, Mayor Burgess, on, on the Neighborhood Watch, Okay, I understand you're looking for volunteers for this and that, but you, you're not allowing people to volunteer for what they want to do. Now, now, now Neighborhood Watch, it, it seems very apparent that there is a necessity for that. Both you and the chief decided that you all didn't need it. Okay, right. well, I don't need a degree, okay? Don't I don't know where the chief is, but man. where I am, People sit out in front of my house conducting business, so to speak. Okay, this is what this is what's going on. You say there's no uh, crime or no whatever you want to call it. What you say is 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 you're trying to paint a picture of it being safer than it is. It is not safe out here. Our streets are dark. Let me tell you, you got to put your lights on so that on your way home from the store in the evening. You don't accidentally commit, commit a vehicle, what do they call it, vehicular homicide, okay? Because people are afraid to walk on the sidewalks because half the houses are empty. You don't know who's in between what, okay? The streets are dark, so you can't see them. I'm sorry, that is an environment for criminal activity. We need, uh, we, we also, another thing that uh, Ms. Washington tried to implement was, uh, I think you call it, uh, I can't think of, it's, it's some kind of dialogue. Anyway, bottom line is it gives the residents an uh, opportunity to voice our concerns and tell each other what's going on. But you, you know what? I'm not sure if you were instrumental in trying to get her removed from the senior center, but the, we need avenues to voice our concerns because we, we need to share what's going on in our blocks and our areas. And then maybe we would want to volunteer for things because we know each other. We wouldn't mind working together. We would have a forum to meet each other, talk about what's going on. And maybe we wouldn't have to just keep coming to you, asking you to fix something like you, Big Daddy. Because obviously, obviously, you have a different goal in mind. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you want to, to see this as a huge metropolis or something, but this is, you got both country living and, and <laughs> their creek living, okay? So you, you're dealing with different types of environments. I'm, no, I'm just saying, we have multiple, um, um, I, I, I like the, the, the ability to, to, to our, our, we have farms, we have country living, we have all of that. We, we got a lot of things. You got a lot of potential that's not being used. But no, I'm just trying to illustrate that 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 you in, in your vast dreams or whatever they are, 
I think you forgot about us. Mm. You know, I don't have chickens, you know what I'm saying, or nothing like that. Mm. But I'm just saying, my house is a little country, but, but mm. I still need water. You know what I'm saying? I still need my streets swept. Um, uh, I, my babies still have to come home from, from school and walk, you know, past numerous abandoned houses and things of that nature. So, Mayor Burgess, you, you, you're the mayor. You got to think for all of us. You got to look out for all of us, not just a select few. And that's, I, I don't think I had a question in that, but. Well, I'm going I'm to address exactly what you just got to say. Okay, well, let's go for it. Good girl. We're not going to debate. I'm going to address the next comments. Okay. First of all, they would watch when it had, when it did go on, you made the comment that it stopped, that crime was down. Mm -hmm. And no, we're not seriously going to be going back. Are you going to let, are you going to let me finish? Are you going to let me, I, I didn't say anything. I'm, I didn't mean that like that. I didn't mean that like that. But you know what I'm saying? But sir, I did not say the crime was found. I did not say it. No, she did. Wait a second. Well, go ahead. Let's speak to you. You make the implication that I'm better than, or I don't understand, I was lonely people, and you're just a country this, and I'm, I'm all that, and however I may feel about whatever, yes, you did. I mean, I wrote it down. I, I, I don't care what how you meant it. I'm talking about how you say it. So only thing, ma'am, ma'am, only thing, only thing I'm telling you is, yes, I do care more than you think about. Well, I'm not here to justify and to sit here and say, you know, I'm here to govern this village to the best of my ability to make sure that it becomes economic, fiscally, so we don't have to continue to raise taxes to bring in as many businesses in here to take the burden off the residents that sit here and pay taxes and to bring more services into this village. That's what I'm here for. Not personalities, not to sit up here and say, okay, well, we're, this is a business, and I'm going to, and I'm going to try my best to do the best I can to make this business work. But to say that I don't, I'm not, I'm, you know, that and I've heard that, I've heard some people say that, that we're golden ghetto. What the heck that means, I have no idea. But that was stated too, that it's a golden ghetto. What does that mean? But I, 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 I pay taxes just like everybody else does. I don't get away with anything. Matter of fact, I, what I do, I do out of passion, not out of money. It's not about money with me, because it was, I, it, 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 I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. However, I'm going to run this village as it should be, in the green, not in the black, not in the red, in the green or, or, or the black. That's what my job and that's what I was elected to do, to make sure that we don't have to raise taxes because we have no money. As far as the services are concerned, I have a, a thing here that I'm gonna pass out to each and every person when you get I'll pass out to the trustees already. To where we rank as a village when it comes to police protection. And if I thought I could raise more money to levy the town to bring it, that's the only way you're gonna do it. Because if you do it with just a one-time increase, a one-time increase of money you got, what happens when that money's gone? Lay those people back off. So you have to look and make sure that the way that you that when you start changing personnel, that that money stays that stays coming in, not just a one-time shot in the arm. I'm gonna pause for a minute because I think I need to. But anyway, that's what I put here for. That's what I was elected to do. That's what I thought I was trying to do. Now, as far as trying to help each and every resident, yes, I will. I will go to whatever I have to. I will talk to each other. I'm not unapproachable. 
Now you know why I try my best not to, because I, I, I'm not here to, to, for that type of thing, to go back and forth. But I will tell you this. I will continue to bring economic development into this town as long as I have breath in my body, as long as I'm mayor here in this village. Because that's what I'm here for. And if, the, and the, and if, if they feel that that's not right, then okay, you're right. There's an election every four years for mayor. You can change that, have no problem. But I'm not going to run scared that, oh, I shouldn't do this because of that. I'm here to try to make this village be part of the rest of the south sub suburb and to fit in and to bring jobs and commerce here. That hasn't been brought in years. When was the last time you saw somebody digging like that, that digging on 394, since you've been here? I know I haven't seen it since I've been here. That type of work, but it's being done and it's going to continue to keep being uh, happy. So I'm not trying to make it seem as if I'm better than no, I'm not. Matter of fact, I have a whole lot of faults. But I'm not here to try to go through all those things. I'm here for the village residents and the taxpayers and the people that live here, the residents, to make it safe, where you can actually go out and, 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 and enjoy when you come home. Yes, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, who, how many more people do we have left that's going to ask questions? Like one, two, three, four. Tell them about the lights on Jeffrey, four years out. Where, uh, you had your turn, sir. Did you, uh, yeah, did you, any good. Did you want to, it's up to the board. Did you guys want to take a break? Okay, but then, you want to take a break? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. I would like to know, is it possible to get a question and answer session with you as um, a group or people? Is it possible to have a question and answer session with me or a group of people? Yes, a question and answer session. Is with you. With you. Okay. With a group of people? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, I thought you said with me and a group of people. <laughs> You'd be involved. Is, is that possible? Yes. And, and I know you talk about this is a business, um, and it is, but if you think about a business, a business cannot be successful without the workers. And if the workers are not taken care of, they can't work. So, so a village cannot make it without the residents. I'm trying to write, ma'am, I, 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 I'm, I'm old enough. I have to write stuff. Hurry up, your three minutes will be up. Well, okay. she, she, she asked my mother whether she was finished. That's why she said that. So it's, it's, I, she wasn't I, trying to rush you. I'm finished with this. Finish. Oh, you're finished? Oh, yes. Oh, that's okay. right. <laughs> that's all clap. Uh, as far as the question and answer period, if you, if, I mean, if you want, uh, what happened with Lincoln Mellon, they have a, a group, and the group came, they have a homework birthday. And they have meetings, so they actually have a meeting, and they asked me to come, and the police chief to come to the meeting, and then they met here. Um, I have no problem with, you know, I've been asked about doing um, town hall again, like I used to do years ago, a couple of years ago. I may, enter, I may bring that back, only if I can, because I had rules on that when I had town hall before, we were not going to go back and forth and all that, but if it's a straight out question, I have no problem, yes ma'am. I will have no problem with having another town hall where we can come out and interact. As long as we keep it, keep it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, as far as the workers not being taken care of, um, I don't, 
but now you're saying the workers, you're saying the workers as far as the residents? Yes, you said okay, that this is a the business. Okay, because the workers is, okay. This is a business, and, 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 and it's a business. And I understand, okay. okay. And now, now I understand what you're saying. Yes. So um, it is a business. Yes, and that's why I was looking at trying to, 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 to bring fact back to the village instead of all this fiction that's going on. Because there's a lot of fiction. I mean, you know, if you if you know that I'm getting free meals in the village and all this and everything, you know, I, you know, it's it's but but that's okay. People do that, and I understand that because I'm in that seat and I got a target. I have no problem with that because I know it's not true. So therefore, that's why I can get up every morning and, and look forward. I got to work behind my back. But as far as getting something like that done now, in the future, I think I'll, I'll wait till it gets cool, colder outside. Because right now people are want to hang outside, and then we can come inside, and then I'll have something like that at town hall meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Would you be able to tell us when that would be? When it gets colder outside. So we're talking about the Maybe December. Not December. I'm not going to go on a holiday. Yes, ma'am. Speaker, former Jamaica Governor Jim Jordan was in Jamaica for the Jamaica Day Parade. I wasn't even going to come up here tonight, I, I just... You said you did not give out any raises. There was an $8,000 raise. Yes. To who? To the treasurer. To the raise. Okay. I'm not going to debate. I don't want to debate. The other thing, you three times tonight have said, I can't get volunteers for the committees. I'm on two committees. I volunteer for everything I possibly can volunteer for that concerns the kids, old folks, whatever. And then I am chastised for it because I put a card, which I wasn't even thinking about, but I was going to, I was thinking about because Excuse said, I'm, excuse sorry. Me, excuse I'm sorry, excuse I'm sorry, I'm being spoken behind my back again. Excuse me, Kent, go ahead now, okay. I mean, go ahead. I didn't do it to be political. I did it because I was told to give them a card. I gave them my cards, they put them in book bags. I got chastised for it. I'm not running for anything in the village at this point. I do what I do out of the goodness of my heart. But if everybody gets chastised for volunteering, you're not going to get volunteers. <laughs> Thank you. That's it? That's it. Can I talk again? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you have to come back and talk to that. <laughs> Mary Escobedo. I'm here again because of the ordinance for social media, which again, I'm going to talk about it every week to let the residents know that there is an ordinance and you let your people go out there on social media, write what they want, yet you sit here and tell us we can't talk or say anything about them, but it's okay for them to do it on social media. Yes. You say you can't control them. We know that because you're the one being controlled. They're controlling you. You're not leading, you're being led. So again, I'm going to continue up here until Joan Wilsonwani is terminated for all the social media he's doing posting, and for all you trustees who ain't doing nothing about it, who go along bobbing their heads every time you want them to. Remember, two of you were not voted in, and I'm sure you're not going to be voted in. And the other two, you're not doing what you were voted in, so I'm sure you won't be voted in again. That's all I have to say. Thank you.
Okay, um, comments from the trustees, start with Trustee Brewer. Okay. Um, first of all, I have to find out the line. Some reason, for some reason, I can't hear today. I get an echo every time I talk. I can't hear you, so you know, use the mic. I'm getting an echo every time I uh, talk or listen to you guys. But um, I got a few things I would like to talk about. Um, everybody has their opinion about what's going on. You don't have to agree with what I agree with, but you got to be respectful. That's what time it is. That's what we were raised to do. Now, the trustees are here. The, the trustees are here to watch the money. We should know where every dime goes in and out of this village. For some reason, when you talk about uh, volunteerism, I have volunteered for certain senior group. I was put off because the mayor didn't agree with me on certain issues. We would let go. Uh -huh. Secondly, the public service uh, is part of my uh, thing that I'm supposed to do for trustee. However, I can't get the information from Jim Cernak in order to make some informed decisions in order to give you guys what you need in order to make a decision about increasing the water fund or anything. That's information I can't get. It should be public information, but I cannot get it from the mayor and Robinson Engineering. Third, third thing I want to talk about is that a resident asks, and she comes in every week and asks about fire hydrants. That's public information. I have forwarded, and I can't get the information. We sit up here every week and ask for information, and we can't get it. We are trustees and can't get information. That's ridiculous. Third thing I want to talk about is that since we have a new director, and I understand that she's getting acclimated to the new job and everything, but there are certain reports that you need in order to make an informed decision from trustees. We need to know where the money is. If the director is not giving her information, where do we go? We don't get it from the mayor because he refused to give me, I said me, I didn't say everybody else, I said me, information that's needed. He tells me that I have to come to his office. I am not going to his office. I am not going to be intimidated, intimidated and harassed by the mayor. You can send that stuff email to me. I can ask questions like you're supposed to ask questions out in the public. That's what you're supposed to do. So, and as there's no transparency here, you cannot get an answer to anything. No. And if a per, if the mayor gets upset with you, you won't be on that committee anymore. That's a fact. That's a fact. So, uh, with that being said, I want to say there's a rally on October 13th to talk about the issues. Uh, on gun violence and the things that's going on in the village. But uh, come down, I don't know what time it is, but it's October 13th, but everybody should be involved. Even everybody should be involved because if you feel like they're going to get you on, on Carol Peterson, believe me, they're going to move across the street next week. So everybody needs to get out there and start talking about soft village lives matter. You need to get out there. You know, as far as this transparency uh, and stuff, the mayor's going to work it out because there's no way in the world we should have six trustees up here and can't get any reports. You have six trustees that don't know where the money is. And as far as that $250,000, the mayor said that he gave a synopsis of uh, what happened with the $250,000. I have documents from Mohan that said he took the money and paid it to t and repaid it to TIP 4. It's in TIP 4. Why can't it go back to, uh, to the water fund? where it belongs. So you know you, you got to think about some of the things that's going on here. Be careful. Are you interrupting me? Seriously, are you finished? Uh, no, because I'm not all finished. You're doing, all you're doing not, is not, instead I'm of having finished. a comment, you're having a rally. Okay. So what you're doing is not a comment that's going to be you talking about personal items or whatever. If you're talking about bringing a rally, I have a problem with that. So if that's what you're here for to do, that fine. I'm not interrupting you. I haven't said anything to you. Finish your statement. Finish your statement, trustee. Finish your statement. 
Are you finished? Are you finished, trustee? Because you, the badge for me to sign, I have no problem with that. I don't care, I can say it. I don't feel like I'm bashful, oh. Mr. Mayor. I'm telling you what's happening. Okay. Well, okay. Tell, tell, it is now so anyway, yo, I have the floor, and I will appreciate it's, it's you not interrupting my comment. Pardon me? I say I have the floor, okay. and please stop interrupting my comment. I'm not interrupting so you. Don't have to, you know, I, 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 I've been, I have been mindful this evening. Look, yeah. And, okay. Well, anyway. Oh, my goodness. So, as you guys can see, what... What's going on? But mm. the trustees are here to service the people. You, you have, don't have to throw me out because I'm getting ready to leave. But I want to tell you something, Mayor. <laughs> With all due respect, go live on Carol like Jay Byrne did over in Cabrini Green for a week, and you'll see what it's like. I'm, you know, right yes. now, right now, right now, right now is the reason why. Right now, what we're doing right now is the reason why I get upset because now you turn this meeting into a free for all. This is what you have. You got up to talk about something on the way out. Everybody had a chance to speak. Everybody had. That's it. You did, sir. No, but you got up. What about the woman that had 14 kids living in a garage? How come human rights you think are going to help her? Why ain't they helping her? That's whose fault is this? Oh, That's your fault. You're the child that is stolen. It's okay. your fault. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good Thank night. you. Have a good evening. Yeah. Have a good evening. I hope I do. I ain't had one so far. Okay. <laughs> Are you through, trustee? No, I wasn't true, and I want to reiterate that. Everybody has their opinion. You don't have to agree with anybody. You know, this, this is what happens should be necessary. Your first thing is to know what happened to your tax dollars. Where are your tax dollars? That's what we're here for. You, we got six people up here that's supposed to be helping the mayor. There's only four of us even trying to do something for the residents of South Hills. That's my opinion. Okay? You don't have to agree with me. Okay? If I'm not here uh, in my uh, two and a half years left, that's on me. But my opinion is that we're not getting the information that's needed. Everybody wants to use TIF money to reinvest in TIF, okay? But I think, and it's my opinion, that residents should be first. That we should have uh, monies, extra money, whatever, for police protection, infrastructure repair. I understand that we need all those, and I repeat that again because I said that from the beginning and stuff like that. Residents will be first. We don't want to put out money. That's right. You know? Officer, I'm going to interject. Just for a second. Well, you didn't get to it. I'm going to interject, Mr. Mayor, for a second. Remind you that you as well as the trustees that according to the five groups of order, when you are in a discussion as we are,
That's the end of my comments. Trustee Zimmerman. Mr. Mayor, this is the first I'm hearing about a rally on October 13th, so I guess I'd like to understand what this is about. Um, and then also from a volunteerism perspective, I know that on numerous occasions I have brought up the fact that I'm always open to volunteers for the Public Safety Committee, so I'll say it again tonight, because there are a lot of faces here tonight that have not necessarily been here in other meetings, so uh, you're not one that recognize it at meetings on a regular basis. So I'm the one who's responsible for the Public Safety Committee. If you're interested in participating in our committee, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Or anyone else who's interested. Um, but yes, and sorry, I'm not speaking to you, Mayor. Um, but uh, I'm going to end my comments with that. Thank you. But I, I would like to know about the, this rally on the 13th that the trustee brought up, because I don't, I don't think that's a village sanctioned event to my knowledge since it's the first one here. I'm not sure that's a village sanctioned information that somebody gave to me. Could y'all talk in the mic? Go ahead, Trustee Gray. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only comment I have is that tomorrow, the Budget and Finance Committee will meet here at 7 p.m. in the Rotunda. Uh, come out if you can. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ordinance Review Committee will have their meeting on September 24th, which is next Monday, 6.30, here at the Village Hall. We're going to be in conference room B. We also look for volunteers. Now, as Trustee Zupan said, we see a lot of new faces. So, just so you know, I'm on the Ordinance Review Committee, and I'm Trustee Todd. And I also have a comment. Uh, tonight I would hear things about the Housing Committee. It's the Housing Commission that is no longer. We do have a Housing Committee, but we do not have a Housing Commission. So there is a difference. So looking at the website, hopefully we'll get it um, updated. And that's my only comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, uh, a few things. One of the things that came up is that rally that we're speaking in terms of the film the 13th, it needs to be coordinated with the police for safety reasons. So people won't run into people and so on and so forth. The other thing that some lady brought up about uh, crime in our neighborhood and the police. Well, you got to remember that the police can predict the behavior they can think about the proper amount of social control. Uh, they. Let me re reiterate that. If the police can predict the behavior, they can bring about the proper amount of social control. 90% of their things is ex facto, and, and the eyes and ears of the police is the citizens. The other thing is, is that uh, it's, hard to police, it's hard to police a community uh, when you have citizens involved in, in that policing that haven't been structured. That has to be trained and taught and so on and so forth, because that's the same issue that goes with it. If someone is upset with the neighbor and they want to get the neighbor, so they call the police and police come and the neighbor's got a problem. So all that has to be structured and it has to be tamed. And thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, first of all, I have a few things. Um, I'm flashing on the pass out, but leave it at the back. The um, police employment officers per capita rates for U.S. cities, and I uh, have a, a markup here, and I'll put some copies in the back so you can see um, what's going on in the area. Also, um, Gen Care came today, and they're looking at what they want to bring a trolley here to the village and. It's October 3rd. I'll put this in the back too. Um, what they're going to do is pick up a group of, of seniors and we'll pick you up at the seniors building, bring you on a tour at Gen Care and continue to a trolley ride where you can see the city of Chicago through the eyes of the tourists. And so they're going to come out and um, 
They're going to do this for the village this first time. I think it's free. And then after that, I don't know if it's going to be something. I don't see anything on here that it, it says something about services. So I'm, I'm sure that after that, it's going to be uh, some type of a plan. But I have the brochure here. The number, if you want to write it down, but I'll put it in the back. It's 312-520-8633. Again, 312-520-8633. And um, please come to the village by October 3rd here. It doesn't need to say the time, though. But if you call that number, I'm sure they'll be able to get me the time. But I'm giving this today. Also, was here today was um, Tom Ed was here in the senior center. And um, they put on a presentation about how you can save money and energy. I have a brochure for this one also. And it's something that um, uh, you can get credits, you can even send and get um, different devices to save energy in your home. And um, well, I've heard some of them, they said they actually come out and, and uh, actually install those for people that cannot, didn't know how to install them. But there's different rebates and discounts and assessments. They can come out and it will do a home energy assessment for your house free. That being said, um, I just have one thing. To, to, to say that um, Friday, we had a groundbreaking right there on 394 in Salt Trail. Um, it's 32 acres of, of land that was purchased. And um, as you can see, the sign is up. It will be a Lenny car, gas and wash. It will be a truck stop with a $3 car wash with a um, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, also, it would have a Brown's chicken, and then I think it would have a um, a Pops uh, roast beef patty. Okay, and all that will be right there under that one roof. So, and I have talked to the people. I have not found out yet when it's going to be available, but they said that it will be approximately available for seventy jobs. So, uh, I'll let. I'll put that out when I find out when that can be uh, started and where people can apply for those particular positions. That being said, I'll accept oh, the I'm sorry, if I, I, I have to talk to the owners of the development at the groundbreaking about when we could expect completion, and they're saying spring. So depending on the weather and how severe or mild the winter would be, we're talking probably early to late spring. But spring is, is the timeline. Yeah, spring, yeah, it's it going to be completed in uh, early spring. I'll accept the motion to adjourn.